Hello and welcome to TSG Foundation's Wisdom of the Zodiac. Today's lesson and meditation will be taken from Wisdom of the Zodiac, Volume 4 by Torquem Sardarian, Chapter 41, titled Pisces, Close to God. This is a beautiful chapter and it reminds me of all the relationships that we build with people every day and how when we think about being close to God, that relationship that we build with people takes us closer and closer to God and vice versa. When we think about God and how we relate to God and all of the creation every day and we bring that down to our daily personal relationships, our lives change. Similarly, when we think of our daily relationships with people, our spouses, our children, our loved ones, our co-workers, and see God in them, something changes inside of us. This is such an important and intimate chapter and a way to look at the full moon meditations as a very personal and intimate relationship that we are building with the universe. So let's start reading and discussing together. I will go through the highlights of this chapter and then we will do a meditation together. We start on page 495, chapter 41. If you have this book, open it to that page. And if you don't have this book, Make a point to purchase these books. There are four volumes and they're absolutely beautiful and they will help you for your entire lifetime. So let me read that first paragraph. Today we are celebrating the Sun in Pisces. So we are celebrating the alignment of our planet with the constellation of Pisces through the alignment of the Sun. When the Sun enters into any constellation, a greater amount of energy comes to the world. It's an alignment. It is just like you tune in or you, lis you listen attentively to something, you are aligned. And that is what is important at this time. These are scientific facts. And you will see that people may, quote unquote, freak out at the time of the full moons. Why is that? Because there's so much energy and they don't know what to do with it. We are told and taught by great ones through these Wisdom of the Zodiac books, through Torquem and other great teachers, that if we focus at the time of full moons, we will have that inner contact that will help us clear the path that we are on. So something is happening on Earth, he writes. What is the secret? The secret is that the sun is acting as a channel to a tremendous amount of energy that is coming from the constellation that it is in. And at this time, it is Pisces. So this energy is penetrating into the sphere of the Earth and to us, of course, all living beings on Earth. And if we are prepared and ready, we start absorbing these energies and elevating our life. So the whole idea is to align, absorb, and change through the energies because each energy gives us a specific instruction, a specific radiation or energy current that will help us change some part of our nature. This is a story of the full moon celebration in a nutshell. Pisces is symbolized in a very strange way. I'd like to read this because this is a, a very beautiful symbology that we can use in our meditations. And this, the symbology is this, that there are two fish that are tied together. The small one is tied to the big one. And symbolically, the ancient ones wanted to tell us that we are like little fish who are tied to the big fish symbolically and wherever the big fish goes, we go with it. Or sometimes we little fish will drag our higher self or the God in us into all kinds of unpredictable ways. So you see, this is very important to know that we are all tied, all of us together, all little fish to the big fish. And what is our relationship? What is that cord and that relationship? And Torquem says, as he was doing his research, he found that in the ancient times, God was called fish. And the Indian name of the fish is Matsya, from the world word Messiah. This fish is floating or swimming in the space, and eventually this fish had children, millions of children. And that is one of the creation myths. So it's a creation myth that we are part of that big fish swimming in a big ocean. Go up to page 496. There is a little thread between the little fish and big fish, and the meaning of that is the most important message of today. What is our link to God? That's so important. How do we come closer to God, more conscious connection to God? 
We are tied to the big fish. Every one of us is tied to God. Just think about that and what that means when you look at someone that you may disagree with, you may dislike or even hate, but that person is also tied to the big fish or to God, just like we are. Any movement that you are doing against God is causing you suffering and pain. And when we disrespect or demean or abuse other people, we are actually cutting their ties to God. We are saying you don't matter. Any movement that you are making to follow the movements of the big fish are creating joy and expansion of consciousness and right human relations. This is the key word. Any movement that you are making to follow the movements of the big fish are creating joy and expansion of consciousness and right human relations. So our movements need to be in synchronization or in alignment with the intent and purpose and plan of the Great One. This is so important. And here he asks on page 497 how to create that closeness with that great presence, the Great Fish. And he numbers five ways. Now you have heard me speak and read in these books about the five principles or seven principles and they are so essential. They may seem very, very simple, but I urge you to think about each one of these. Take these five points and meditate on them each every day of the full moon. So you have five days or seven days, whichever you want to celebrate, the day of the full moon, two days before or two days after, or three days before, three days after, or even one day before and one day after. At minimum, celebrate or think or meditate. That's what celebration means, to think and meditate and put yourself in a new mood, uplifted mood, thinking about these principles. And why, what are they? The first one is to worship beauty. Worship means to sing, to pray, to ask, to concentrate, to focus, to give your heart to beauty, the beauty in everything, your words, your thoughts. So think what you can do on that one day of beauty, how you can bring more beauty into your life and the life of others. Let that one day be a day of beauty for you. Second day, make it a day of goodness. Can you do goodness? Sometimes people say, I can't do good. Well, think of how many ways you can do good. Make that day a day of goodness, the goodness in your thoughts, in your prayers, Maybe just say something beautiful and good through your internet, through your emails, through your words that you speak to others. Okay, it's not that hard. It is something that all of us can do. The third one that brings us to the great presence is called righteousness. Can we be righteous in everything that we do? We don't steal from people. We don't take their joy away from them. We don't take their happiness their abundance from them. Instead, we give to them. We are righteous. We give more than we take. This is really one of the most important laws. The law of righteousness is closely tied to the law of karma. That when we are giving more, we are paying forward. We are giving not just money, but time, talent, attention, love, everything that we can give that's inside of us, our expertise, our beauty, we can give it. That is going to reap benefits at the end of the day for everyone around us. What we are trying to do is uplift everyone, not just ourselves. The next one is called joy. Did you try to increase the joy of other people? This is so important. Look at this one sentence that is the key. And you, as you know, if you've read Torquem's Joy and Healing or taken the meditation course Joy and Healing, it will change your life guaranteed. If you do the work, your life is going to change because joy is an alchemical process that changes your entire structure. Joy increases not become, because you are becoming joyful, but because you are making other people joyful. You see, it starts with you, put the past behind you, the pain and suffering, go forward in joy and then increase the joy of people around you. It is so phenomenal and profound. The fifth thing that will make us close to the Holy Ones is freedom. It is so beautiful. If you think freely, if you act freely, if you try to break crystallizations in your mind, fanaticism, separatism, and start becoming an eagle or a fish that has no limitation in the ocean, then you are getting closer to the mother fish. That is so beautiful and so heavy 
and serious. Everyone in the world wants freedom from a little child from the day they are born. They want to be free. They want to do things their way. And yet in so many ways, we restrict everyone's freedom and even our own. Think of the ways you restrict your freedom from your old crystallized thinking, the old patterns, the old griefs that you have suffered and you have not been able to put them behind. This is so important. So how to do these? And he outlines keynotes that I will go over, but I'd like you to really read these and think about them. The first one he says, follow your conscience. Follow your conscience. If it's something inside you says, this is wrong, don't do it or take time to think it through. Whenever you are going to talk or say or do something that seems a little bit iffy, pause and think about it. It is so important. Follow your conscience. Why? Because your conscience comes to you from your soul, from your soul or angel, from God himself. That is your conscience, that inner voice that you sometimes don't hear, but it whispers in our ear. It is so important. How do we develop that way to follow our conscience? It is by, in my opinion, scientific meditation. Learn how to meditate. Look at page 500. Meditation is the method through which you slowly, slowly penetrate into the sphere of the consciousness field of the great fish. You see, you are expanding your mind. You're not just hallucinating and shutting out the world or just relaxing. Those may be simple ways to meditate. They are fine and they're important, but meditation is a method to register higher impressions from the big fish Meditation is also concentration. The basic way that you meditate is you sit very quietly and you let your mind relax so that you're not playing old tapes. You integrate your bodies, as I've taught before, integrate your each body and then align yourself. And in that alignment, you start thinking deeply and try to penetrate into the truth that you are seeking in your sea thought or something that you've read. Now, let's take us to the beautiful meditation in this chapter. We can go to page 506 to 507. I will lead this meditation. And if you follow me, it is beautiful. It is simple, yet has profound meaning for us. As you are doing this meditation, think about that great universal energy that you want to be with. Think about how to do this all our old tapes and our old patterns have to be left behind. They have to be relegated to the past that we do not visit any longer. Leave them go and go forward in your thinking, your aspiration, and your alignment to the great energy field of the universe and see how you can come closer to that energy. If you want further uh, meditations on becoming closer to God, I would recommend you take a look at the book 100 Names of God by Targum Saradarian or call me and I will help you devise a beautiful meditation using that book that will change your life and uplift you. So let us now do this meditation together. <clears throat> so to do this meditation, sit up very straight and relax. Put your shoulders back. You don't slump forward. Just relax and close your eyes. Take a deep breath and exhale. Take a minute to integrate your three bodies. Think first of your physical body and relaxed. And then bring a beautiful violet body around you. That is your etheric body, your energy body. And just see it forming. Beautiful light surrounding you. Next, bring the beautiful crystal clear silvery blue emotional body, nice and serene and peaceful. Then align with your mental body, lemon yellow. Take a minute to bring those three bodies together and focus your mind. As you do this over and over, once a month or once a day, you will see how your mind will will become stable and it won't fluctuate. It is, if it is fluctuating, it means you just need a little more practice. Then let us align with our soul. 
beautiful blue flame that we align with. And keep that alignment in your mind as we go through this process. Think about the ocean first. The ocean that covers our earth, the beauty of it, the depth of it. Next, think of all space, the solar systems and galaxies. Think of the infinite space at the center of which there is the creator, God, the creative force of the universe. Take a minute to solidify that visualization. Keep that focus as we say the great invocation. And as we say the great invocation, think of that beautiful universal force shedding its light and love and its will and direction to all of humanity. Keep that focus with every sentence that you are saying. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. Stay focused. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Now visualize again that great center. Visualize first the light that is coming to humanity. Flooding us with light. Flooding our leaders with light and wisdom. Next, let that center radiate love the love of God, the love of Christ toward all humanity. Next, visualize the Great Ones who understand the purpose and the plan of the Great Ones and radiate that to humanity. Next, visualize humanity receiving the light, the love, and the power of the Great Ones and the Holy Ones. Receiving it, accepting it, and empowering themselves with these divine qualities. Especially let those divine three qualities, light, love, and power, Radiate on all our leaders in every nation, in every city, in every place. Great leaders, little leaders, all leaders. Let them all be inspired. Take a deep breath and say three ohms silently or out loud. 
first one to radiate light. Second one to radiate love. Third one to radiate power, divine power. And let light and love and power restore the plan on earth and all humanity be endowed with light, love, and power. Now think, staying focused, how close am I to God? How far am I? And what do I need to be closer? So think how you are going to be closer to God. Think of the five principles and maybe take one of them and see how you can expand that in your life. They are beauty, goodness, righteousness, joy, and freedom. Take your five most favorite principle of the five and think how you can expand that and how that will bring you closer to God. Make three resolutions or decisions. Put your mind into action. What are the three things that you are going to do? Three resolutions that will govern your life for the entire month of Pisces so you can be closer to God. I will read this beautiful mantra, More Radiant, and repeat after me. More radiant than the sun, purer than the snow, subtler than the ether, is the self, the spirit within my heart. I am that self. That self am I. Close with an ohm. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy these classes. I look forward to bringing you more of these lessons from Wisdom of the Zodiac. Please call us or contact us if you need more information about what we do at TSG Foundation, our classes, our programs and seminars. We'd love to connect with you and help you choose just the right study, the right book and the right meditation course that suits your needs. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.